Hey everybody to another exciting Lord Duckman production. Behind me here we have a goldfish bowl. That's right. It is a curved windshield super beetle. There are flat windshield varieties as well. There's links down below in the video description if you don't want to believe me, but not all super beetles have a curved goldfish bowl windshield like you see right there. Anyway, we're going to have a walk around on this one later on in the video. We're going to show what's going on on this thing. This is going to be a complete start to finish project. Well, mostly start to finish project. It needs to be completely assembled, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be going through. To get it running, driving, then I give it back to the owner for them to do the rest themselves. But anyway, one of the things we need to attack right now is the headlight buckets. Look at those things, completely obliterated. But the fenders are otherwise solid, and they even have decent paint. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to start welding on these because we're just going to burn the living crap out of them. So in the best interest of keeping the paint as nice as possible, we're going to be using panel bond. And there's a few different varieties of it. It's made by 3M, and if you guys haven't experienced that before, ah, uh, well, here it is. It comes in a cork gun just like this. They don't give you very much. It's a little tiny tube, but at the same time, you really don't have to eat up a whole lot of it. There's two different types. There's a 16 and a 15. Part numbers are down below in the video description. You can make a purchase there if you'd like, and if you do make a purchase, I get a little kickback. It's a little spendy, but if you don't weld or don't know how to weld, then certainly the money is worth it. I mean, you might spend 100 bucks to put together something like this, but again, a welder might cost you, you know, for a good one, you know, four or 500 bucks or more. So this may be an option for you. Now, anybody can glue something in, and that's pretty much what we're doing. And this is the same thing that manufacturers use nowadays to assemble brand new automobiles. You might be saying, hey, brand new automobiles are made like crap. But you know, one thing we don't have a problem with, we don't have problems with them literally falling apart at the seams. I can't say that I've ever seen that happen. I mean, rust is rust, but if you have this stuff on there, um, yeah, they don't fall apart. So where they skip welds, this stuff does certainly take over. Anyways. For now, welcome back to Duckman Cycles MVW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman, and we're going to be stepping back just a second so we can run that intro. So like and like it, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to plug that thing. Nobody's get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links, and we'll be back right after that intro. <laughs> All right, as you saw from the opening of this video, these headlight buckets are pretty well rotted out. And there's just a ton of holes in them, and there's no no way to fix that, actually. Just the best way to fix it is by replacing it. So we've got two headlight buckets here, and this one kind of got a little crushed during shipment. Hopefully I can put it back into shape. This is the right side. So that's the one for the other side. This is our lefty. And what we're going to do is we're probably going to cut around the inside, right around the inside lip here, and right around the inside lip in here. And the goal is to get this kind of pressed in there. So we'll see what we can do as far as making that work. But this is going to be our cut line right here. I suspect this is probably going to work out just fine. CIP1, of course, is the sponsor of Gregory the bus. For those of you that haven't followed the Gregory Project, yes, we'll get back to the bus sometime in the future. But what I need to do currently, you know, this is the left. What am I saying? This is left from the way I'm looking at it. But this is the proper left side, or right side, rather, of the vehicle, the passenger side in here in the United States. <laughs> so this is the one that actually needs to go in here. I'm glad I observed that. I knew something didn't look right when it came to the hole in the bottom of it where the wires come through because typically it's closer to the body. So this is what's going to go in here. All right, well, what we need to do is start cutting on this sucker. First, we need to make it round again. At least as round as we can get it. The good news is, is when we push it into this opening, it will re-round itself. All right, let's get a couple of cuts made and see what turns up. In a big hand, man, you can just palm something like that. And yes, I can palm a basketball. <laughs> Way back when, people wanted me to play basketball in high school. In later high school, I was one of the tallest kids, but uh, I didn't like running around and chasing a ball. It didn't seem fun to me.
you may want to ask me why I took the paint off, and that's because the seam sealer, no, it's not seam sealer. That's because the panel bond likes to adhere to bare metal surfaces, especially ones that have a texture to it. So what you're looking at here, this uh, seam sealer, again, I said it, <laughs> panel bond is going to very, very mechanically and properly stick to this thing like it should. Anyway, this is pretty good. I'm gonna tune up the edges a little bit, get rid of some of the little razor sharp edges on here that'll cut the crap out of somebody. They don't need to be like that. You see all these little things right here? These are the things that will slice the living dog piss out of you. And you might be saying, hey, Duck Man, why do you keep touching them? That's because I know how to handle metal, and I've done this stuff for years, and metal doesn't cut me anymore. I rarely ever get cut on something unless I send something flying, in which case, well, then all bets are off. But <laughs> otherwise, this bucket should be going into here just like that. So now we need to remove this one. There it is. There we go. I'll have to clean up this edge in here because again we need bare metal for which the stuff to stick to. And then it should, after some adjustment, I may even have to put a relief cut in it. Should go right in there. And that doesn't fit very good at all. But uh now it's the right one. It's the right, the right ear and everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get it in there. It's gonna take a little massaging, but it'll go. Helps if I put it in straight, too, doesn't it? Oh, look, it's a better fit. Oh! <laughs> There's actually a little spout on the bottom where water is supposed to pour out in the event that water does get inside of here. But that's not too bad. Okay. Make some adjustments accordingly, and we'll get this to work. To see, off camera just a minute ago, I put a little pie cut down through the little uh, drain hole on the bottom, so you can see the little cut we made. And what this will do is it'll allow this to shrink up just a little bit as I push it into the hole where it's supposed to go. And if I cut enough out of it, I think I did. I mean, I did take out what, what maybe a quarter of an inch tops. It should slide right into here. Actually, that, you know what? That gets it. That's perfect. That is perfect. Look at that. There we go, we're done. <laughs> not really, but yeah, we're done. So what I can do now, and I'm not gonna do it yet, but I'll pull this back out. I'll run a little bit of this uh, panel bond all the way around the edges, and then push this back in. And then I'll take my finger and squish a little bit around the edges just to smooth it out. And in 24 hours to cure, we got a brand new headlight on here. Now, you probably noticed that happened very quickly because it wasn't spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld. Grind, 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 grind. <laughs> oh, I missed a spot. Oh, I burned through. Come back and, yeah, none of that. This is actually really, really quick. And that's a nice thing for this product. So, I mean, it's certainly worth its weight in gold. So anyway, we're gonna hit the other side before we come to this because when I open this, I only wanna open it once. It comes with nozzles, two of them. And once you use the nozzle one time, you gotta throw it away. So I wanna hit these both at the same time. And then possibly, if we get to it, probably not in this video, so it's probably not gonna happen. But there's some welding or body work that needs to be done on the back also, on the main body. And if I can hit that at the same time, that would be the ideal time to do it. So try to do your run around. And as I said, they don't give you a whole lot in this thing. I mean, there's probably no more than here than there is in like a, two tubes of toothpaste. It's not like a full-size caulk tube that you, you know, put around your bathtub. Anyway, uh, all right, we'll come back to this in a second. Let's go ahead and hit the other side and see where we get. This side, the rust in here is actually quite worse. It looks like it's, uh, it's getting into the rim. We'll see if we can knock this whole bucket out of here. I'll probably do the same cutting procedure all the way around, and then I'll peel the ring out. It's probably what I should have tried to do on the other side. This one, yeah, this one's rusted way into the ring, so this is shot. I wonder if I can pull it out. Sometimes these little, um, what do they call them? 
spot welds that they put on here with the machines. If they get a little bit of rust in between the layers, they let go. All right, well, let's start cutting and see what falls out. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. Ah! Go. Ow, hot. Yeah, this ring is uh, it's coming off. See, look at that. It's a good thing that I didn't try to save this one because this one was shot anyway. I would have wasted my time. All right. <laughs> it's not very well attached at all. Holy crap! Okay. It was only a couple spot welds that was holding in, really. I guess it was held in by paint and just years of rust. Alright, there's all that rust I was talking about in here. I mean, it's uh, not severe enough that it's rusted through, but I can clean that up. And then again, got a little piece over here that needs to be cut off. A little panel bond, and uh, this will be good to go. That squeaky lady across the street that just goes boop, 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 boop. Oh, sounds like something from a Peanuts cartoon. Nope, she's in her car. Never mind. You didn't get to hear anymore. I'm sure you heard some of it, though. <laughs> All right, well, where's our other bucket? Here's the other bucket. Let's see if it goes in as is. And you know what may not is a, a burr over here. Let's snip that burr off first. Burr has been removed. Let's see what happens here. We'll get the spout lined up on the bottom, and it's in. Pretty good fit. Okay, again, we'll clean up the edge in here, get the rust off of it. I'll clean up the bucket too. We'll get the panel bond ready, and this sucker's ready to go in as is. I probably could have done the same thing on the other side, like I said, but the other flange is pretty well attached. And it would have been a lot of grinding to clean that out of there. And like I said, I wanted to upset the paint on this as little as possible. Oh, zoomed in too much. Here's another step I like to take to get the, all these stickers off of here. All the warning stickers, the part numbers, and the manufacturer's numbers. Just gently heat it. You can do, use a hair dryer also. But these decals will peel right off when you get this nice and warm. You can also leave it out in the sun. Much more passive way rather than having the right tool. There you go. Alright, we need to remove the paint from the lip of this thing. All right, there it is, cleaned all the way around. We got a good enough area to get some adhesion. And then what we'll do is we'll run our bead of goo all the way around this and then push it in. All right, I'm gonna have a drink of cold water. It is 84 degrees out here instead of 104 degrees out here. We have a, a little cold snap. Yeah, we're gonna have to wear our winter coats and start wrapping our pipes because it's cold out here today. Still sweating my ass off anyway. Uh, <laughs> the humidity's way up. It did rain yesterday, so everything was wet. Finally rained. I mean, a good rain after several weeks. It's been almost a month, and I think we had only two good rainstorms and just a, a couple of dribbles in between here and there. But anyway, I'm not complaining. I got a lot done this summer so far, even though it's been as hot as it has. All right, well, let's go in here. I'm going to take a rest, and we'll be back in just a little bit. How we prepare it. Just simply open it up. 
And then, oh, I forgot to grab the nut. The little nut here that goes on top of it. This is what holds the spout on. Now inside of here, the two-part epoxy will mix up. It's got a little, um, like a little something you'd see in like the mousetrap game, if you remember that from way back when. I don't even know if that board game still exists anywhere. I imagine it probably still lives. But like one of the steps is, you know, things bounce back and forth, and that's what it does. So as I squeeze this, you're going to notice, you see, it mixes. And when it gets to the tip, it's thoroughly mixed, and it's ready to apply. So, on the car it goes. Alright, here we go. For the money shot. Now we don't need to spread this very thick because this is going to fit pretty snug. But I want to get just enough on that it splooges itself together. I think this has about uh, like an hour setup time or something. At 115 and 116 um, 3M part numbers. You know, I forgot to get the stickers off of this. That's okay. When we pull the wheel off later, we'll get them to do with the heat gun. Um, one cures in like an hour and the other cures in like two hours. Otherwise, they both completely harden uh, in 24 hours. And I probably should rephrase that. They're workable for one to two hours, depending upon which product you get. One hour is more than enough time to, to work this thing out. I mean, usually by the time you get this thing sorted, it's seconds. And because of how this thing kind of spring fits together, I don't even have to put any weight on it or clamps. It should just press right in. All right, there we go. Let's put this sucker in. For some reason, I'm picking up hints of like licorice from this. It's kind of weird. I'm not much of a licorice fan. My dad is though. I think the chicken's going crazy. I'm gonna have to go in the back and check on them in just a second here. They always pick the worst times to make a ton of noise. Alright, gently yeah, press this in. Just needs to go far enough. I think that actually gets it right there. We'll just smear a little around the edge there just to make sure we get a good closing up properly. I mean this is not a seam sealer. In fact this is much more expensive than a seam sealer is. So don't start using it as a seam sealer. But I'm just trying to uh, get the adhesion of these two panels together here. Also be careful, of course, that was a sharp edge. When this dries up, I can put a little paint on it, and it'll look nice and professional, just like it was always meant to be. Very good. All right, before we continue, I'm gonna go check them stupid birds in the yard and find out why they're fighting. <laughs> All right. There we go. Put the goof around the edge here. No relief cut was necessary in this one. Because this one is keeping its ring. Relief the pressure. Ready to go in. Our bottom is the part with the drain hole. There's a little slot in here that that locks into. 
Yes, I did polish the inside of this uh, fender. So that way we get bare metal to bare metal adhesion. This side fits even better because we didn't uh, cut that ring off. There we go. That's it. And a little bit of mineral spirits will clean up the excess around the edges. In fact, it also helps you to feather the edges of it. If you're going to paint or something over this, it'll feather out the edges to it real nicely. In this case, the headlight ring is going to cover it anyway. Nobody's ever going to see this. That was the idea here, guys. Fix this. Be as minimally intrusive as possible. This uh, mineral spirits is actually taking the chalk out of the paint. <laughs> we got a shiny fender over here. <laughs> Might as well do the whole thing, right? <laughs> Make the fender really shiny. I wonder if it'll keep it shine after the spirits dries up. <laughs> the owner planned on leaving this uh, in the condition it's in. Didn't want to put any more paint on it, didn't want to do anything up. It kind of just wanted to let it age into what it is. So I didn't want to start making a whole bunch of bodywork marks on it. All right, I'm satisfied with that. We got headlight buckets. Let this sit 24 hours. Tomorrow, actually first thing in the morning will be fine, but I'll leave it alone until the end of the day tomorrow before I start trying to mount headlights in it. I need to run a tap through here anyway because the little tangs where the headlight screws go in are filled with uh, paint. When they ship these things out, they painted them and you know, they got paint in the holes, so I got to chase those threads and make sure they're nice and clean. That way the headlight mounts properly. Okay, well, I guess that's it for now. So let's go ahead and have a walk around the car. saying, on these tips you get one use only. And that's a bummer, because you have to buy more of them, but anytime you use this stuff, this tip is shot. No, you can't clean it. I'm not even gonna bother trying to clean it. Too gooey, too sticky, too yucky. Just not meant to go on there. There's a little cap that's meant to go in here too. This is the cap, so make sure you get the yellow with the yellow and the black with the black, because if you get them mixed up, they're gonna turn into something hard. And then you won't be able to get the cap out the next time. And this is not a ask me how I know situation, because I haven't done that to myself, because I've been smart enough. So anyway, we'll put this panel bond away, and it'll be good for the next time we go to use it. How much should we use of it anyway? Like I said, they don't give you very much in these things. Not very much at all. Come on, come out of there. This little plastic clip that was on here had to come down and out of the way. Then, this whole thing slides out. There it is. And looking where the plunger is, it looks like we might have used up to a quarter of a tube already. So, like I said, this stuff doesn't go very far. It doesn't last very long, but if you're gonna be doing this kind of repairs and you don't have access to a welder or you don't know how to weld this certainly is an option for you 3M panel bond guys this is the special applicator no you don't have to have the applicator you really just need this you could push them evenly by hand if you wanted to but this is just so much easier everything we cut out and there's our new headlight buckets yeah panel bond guys panel bond I might start using that more and more and more certainly makes a job a lot easier and saves me so much time that it's it's definitely worth the investment really nice to see no rust underneath the crescent vents no rust at all There's some ugly spots in the paint but it looks like that was somebody's weld mark so I would speculate that somebody came in here and, and grafted this section in already although it sounds a little a little dense here like maybe there's a lot of filler it's usually there's more of a a drum sound you know like but yeah it doesn't sound like that there this side 
is much the same way. You see somebody's weld marks they didn't grind off, but again, much more dense. But the drum sound is much more obvious over here. There's a little bit of filler here. Somebody painted over a hole that they didn't properly fill in. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, all this is good. This is good. Nothing for me to cut out. Same with the corners of the lights, or lights. Same with the corners of the windows in the back. These look good. Windshield is also good. No obvious rust through here. We're not gonna pull the windshield out to find out, but it's all in good shape through here. Good. Ted, those headlight buckets turned out really good. All right, well, this is a Super Beetle. I mean, as if the curved windshield doesn't tell you enough. It actually does have McPherson struts. You can see them up under the hood up here. So if you have a flat windshield Super Beetle, and yes, they do exist, 71 and 72, they made those. You will still find the McPherson struts up front, but it does have a longer hood that runs all the way to here because the windshield is flat and runs, well, semi-flat. <laughs> it runs all the way up to here. If you don't believe me about it being semi-flat either and you happen to have a flat windshield beetle, and that's from 1960... Oh, where am I at here? 65 and up. Take a level, lay it across the windshield, and try to rock it back and forth. And you tell me what you see. Anyway, this beetle is otherwise in very, very good shape. One of the problems that we have to address is the fender bolts pulled out, and there's some rust right down in here. Again, I'm gonna to try to cut into this and use panel bond to repair that, so that way we don't have to disturb much of the paint on that. Same problem over on the other side. This side's a little more severe, though. This side had actually a, uh, a hole under there. In fact, it looks like somebody bondoed everything together. So I'm gonna do a little digging around in there. There's also a dent here. This whole thing bends inward, so this was probably hit or something happened there at some point. Otherwise, we'll get that fixed. Um, the engine is out. Here's the engine. I had it covered because it did rain last night really heavily. And this is how it was dropped off, just in the condition you see. So I wanted to make sure everything was covered up so we didn't get any dirt down the side of there. I wanted to make sure that everything was good to go. So that way we'll be ready to start this thing because we're going to start it out of car, adjust the valves, make sure everything works like it's supposed to, then we're going to shove it in the car. And we should be able to go from there. Um, otherwise, this car has a new electrical harness on it. You can see all the brand new wires that's coming out everywhere. That's nice, as long as everything was run properly to the correct locations. I don't know any of that yet. I don't trust any of it. I'm going to have to do a proper diagnostic and go through everything on it. Otherwise, yeah, new electrics is good. This doesn't look new, though. Yeah, probably a piece of the old was left in there. Looks like there's an old piece on that side, too, for the taillights. That's fine. Not a big deal. Inside, we have our stupid beetle dashboard, which is all cracked up. I'm going to be re replacing that, uh, the pad on top of it, with a new piece, which should be in here somewhere. There is a lot of stuff inside of this car. I didn't need quite as much as is in here. Um, I, I said I only needed one seat, but they brought me both. Here we go. Let's put some dents in the doors by smashing it on the back seat. I don't think there was a back seat in there, though, was there? No, it didn't look like it. Okay. Uh, headliner did get skeeched. On delivery, they did something to it and had an accident, but this is an old, delicate headliner anyway, so it was not really in particularly good shape. Um, it does have the older style, st older style steering wheel. Somebody in here has already addressed the heater channels. These were actually in good enough shape that they can be left alone. Floor pans have also already been taken care of. As you notice, the kill mat's been put down everywhere, so I don't have to cut up the floors in this. I don't have to take the body off of it. That's nice, because that's the kind of stuff you guys usually see me do. This smaller, you know, nitty-pitty stuff that I'll be doing from here out, like installing taillights, is something that you don't usually get to see me do. So this car is going to be a very, very different project. But kind of like Lego bricks, I just have to start assembling everything and make sure everything works properly once we get that far. Um, otherwise, I have no idea what condition any of this stuff is in, and I won't know until I start assembling some of these things. But the only body work that I really need to be concerned with was the headlight buckets and the rust under these fenders. I think this has four-wheel disc brakes on it already. Yep, four-wheel discs. I can see them underneath there. Here, you can see them better if I show you that way. See, it's already been installed. Front wheel's the same way. I did notice something here the other day. I leaned on this front fender just a little bit, and this wheel started making noises. 
So I think that's what it looks like to me. It looks like the whole wheel is moving on the spindle. So I think the, uh, wait, this cap's not even on there right. It's not on there right. And now that I'm looking at that, you can see that the pinch nut is not centered. Yeah, I don't think the bearings are tight on the wheel. Nope, they're not. There's our problem. That's what all that racket is. So I guess I gotta fix that too. This wasn't even on there. It needs some grease in there. I don't even know if the bearings are packed right. Well, I guess we'll have a look and we'll figure that out too. Um, gas tank's not in there. <laughs> gas tank is in here. In fact, I'm gonna get it out of the car. I don't like where it's at. A little trouble to close the door. When it was delivered to me, I would have just put it under the hood where it belongs to get it out of the way so that way you can you know, move on with the project. There's our hood dick. If you don't believe me about it being a dick, people always get me, why do you call it a dick? Well, I mean, look at it. You, you tell me. <laughs> it's a hood dick. All right? So, yeah, that's the hood dick. That needs to get reinstalled on the hood, along with the hood handle. If all the hardware is here for it, I'll put it on. Uh, spare tires in there. No rust I need to address. This car is actually in really good physical shape. It's, it's in good form. This thing is um, it's incredibly solid. Even the doors work properly. And when I lifted it at the bottom here, you see the A-pillar is not moving. So it still has a solid A-pillar. This uh, chrome trim that people put on here usually is to cover up ugly rust, but looking at the very, very bottom of it, it doesn't look like there's any rust that it was hiding. So I guess it was just somebody's piece of trim work that they installed. Either way, I'm not removing it, so if there's something ugly underneath there, it's going to stay under. It's a nice piece of trim. So yeah, uh, oh, what year is it? This is what you guys probably want to know. Oh, no VIN number. That's interesting. wonder why. Okay, do we have one under the hood? There's a body tag, but I don't see an actual... Hmm... Well... <laughs> I don't know what year it is. Somebody can tell me. Usually you can tell by the shape of the hood here in the bottom. It does have the crash bumpers on it, which is something that was 73 and up, but we know it's a 73 and up because it has that shaped windshield. It's gonna be less than a 77 because 78 and up was all converter bottles. So it's a 73, 74, 75, 76, or 77. So we got five years to choose from. Somebody watching here, maybe you can guess. Go ahead. Throw me out some guesses. See what you got. Got somebody yelling on the screen. <laughs> Sounds like he was talking on the phone, but he's not. <laughs> Unbelievable. Ah, this neighborhood is always all kinds of wacky. Mr. Mr. Softy came through the neighborhood. Ice cream truck. They're uh, based out of New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. First time I've ever seen them in this neighborhood, and I flagged them down, and I got some ice cream earlier today when I was working. And he said, because when I told him it's the first time I've ever seen his neighborhood, he says, yeah, all of his, his <laughs> companions that he works with are afraid to come through this neighborhood. I said, why? I mean, this neighborhood's not really any trouble. I mean, there's not a whole lot of money here, but this neighborhood's not any trouble. And he, and he said he agreed. But anyway, uh... <laughs> He told me to download the app so I can tell when he's in the area so I can make sure I get some ice cream. But, yeah, it was interesting for to see him come through here, but we do have our share of uh, lunatics, you know, wackos and crackheads that do pass through this neighborhood to get to some of the other places. And, you know, one main road right there, one main road about two blocks that way. So this is the quick way through to get from one to the other. All right, I guess that's going to be it for today on this sucker. Uh, probably before we leave, you know what we should do? We should talk about that bus over there. What about that bus? Well, that bus should be out of here by now, but we kept running into problems like the brand new steering coupler exploded. I don't know what the hell happened here, but clearly this rag joint, which is supposed to have a rag in it, just had a piece of string. It was wrapped around each of these little collars that where the bolts go, and that was all that was tying it together. Anyway, thankfully, I was only turning it around in my driveway, and I wasn't actually going down the highway at 80 miles an hour when it blew up. So a few of these pieces were still bolted into the vehicle, and the rest of them were just at the end of my driveway, and I only just found them when we had daylight the next day. Well, the bus otherwise is a runner. This thing, <laughs> this thing truly amazes me. 
I put so much work into this engine getting this thing tuned properly. Everything from the timing marks on the uh, fan, which were non-existent. You can see the little timing dial right here. This, uh, all the markings on it were just erased. And you see the yellow marking, that's what somebody put as top dead center when it was wrong. I had to compare it against one of uh, Wild Bill's timing dials and discovered that the red mark on the right is actually zero. The one on the left is 28 degrees. So I got the timing set right. Ah, oh, you know what, I see my uh, vacuum advance line is off. I'll have to check that. I guess it fell off or I forgot to put it back on, but otherwise this thing runs just beautifully. We've got a set of CB Performance, Weber, ICT carburetors in there. There's the linkage, CB Performance linkage. This is the only linkage I will use with dual carburetors. The reason why is it's solid, it's non-yielding, it doesn't bend. This is just ideal. This is what you want. And one of these, uh, oh, my leg just touched the exhaust, and that was a little hot because I was running it earlier. <laughs> because uh, this won't bend on you and it won't give up on you. This is the good one to have. So, yeah, there's my vacuum line. I guess when I was timing it earlier, I forgot to put it back on. All right, well, let's reattach it. Why does it seem too short? Is it knotted around something here? <laughs> yeah, it's on. Good, okay, well, let me go ahead and start it and show you what we're talking about. This exhaust, by the way, that was uh, an amalgam of a early Type 2 exhaust. Because for some reason I thought this bus was a 68. I don't know why the hell I kept thinking that. I knew better, but I kept calling a 68, so when I told the owner of the bus to order an exhaust, he got one for an early low light bus, which is for, you know, same uh, engine that's in a Type 1. Anyway, it's the earlier three bolt flange style exhaust that you'd find on a merge collector on a Type 1. This one, however, is a Type 4, so it has four independent exhausts, which combine into Ys on either side, and then finally in the center, the two elbows there are 180s actually merge. And these muffs were off of the Type 1 exhaust. I cut them, I welded them, and I got them fitted onto this. And they're actually a little bit bigger diameter. So for whatever reason, it's going to breathe just a little bit better. But the great thing was is those pipes actually slid over the uh, headers that were on here already. So it was just a matter of sliding it over, getting everything lined up the way it should be, and welding them all together. And it turned out pretty good, i got to admit. But the best part is what it sounds like. I mean, this thing just... This engine just purrs, man. This is the best running Type 4 engine that's left here. All the other ones that ever left here before that ever worked on always had one of them Weber progressive carburetors on it. And while they ran, <laughs> it was just not the ideal combination. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, let's go ahead and start this thing up. This key switch up here probably needs to be replaced because it keeps coming out. And when it comes out, sometimes it doesn't want to re-engage, and the key gets stuck in it. You can't remove the key from it, so it's kind of an issue. All right, well, we go. Make sure we're not in gear. We're not. And here we go. Start her up. Idiot lights. And I mean, this thing just purrs, man. See? It just sounds perfect. Absolutely perfect. No loud exhaust leaks, no snapping, banging, popping. It doesn't do any popping or banging at all. Well, once you warm it up. Of course, having no chokes on these carburetors is the only big drawback to it, but uh, unless you're in a really, really cold environment, which here we're not, <laughs> you probably won't have any problem at all. And even if you do, it's just a matter of just tapping the throttle a few times until finally the engine warms up enough that it can run on. But uh, this one runs great. I wouldn't change a thing about it. This engine is running ideal as is, leave it alone. And yes, it does have a 034 distributor or equivalent. And pull the back in the and there it is, running great. Fantastic. I am just really happy with the way this runs. So by the time you're watching this video, it's probably long gone, but I gotta call the owner and tell him to come get it. Oh, by the way, this is the old fan belt that was on here, which feels like gummy bears. It doesn't have that normal fibrous feeling that you feel in a belt. It's not hard, it's not coarse, it's squishy. Really weird, it's a little sticky too, like gummy bears are. Very unusual. And these are all the bolts I had to cut off the exhaust header to get it out. That was a damn disaster. Every single bolt needed cutting, because every single one was breaking off. 
What a disaster. Just cut them. Just cut them all off. All right, well, I think we're good over here. That just about wraps up this video. So link you like and comment and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time.